uh, break break through and uh, get that seed in the ground. And then, you know, people are going to be firing up the, the hay bines, the rakes, the balers here, uh, end of May into early June, get that first cutting. And then before you know it, uh, we'll be into second cutting and even harvesting grains uh, throughout the, you know, the latter part of summer. So it's really, really, truly an exciting time. I wanted to give some updates about the uh, Mariana Outdoorsman Association. We've been really, really busy. Um, just give you some a couple things we've been working on. Uh, we recently stocked our pond at our facility at Wild Acres Farm. Uh, that address is 1997 Maury Road, Clarksville, Pennsylvania, 15322. Again, that's 1997 Maury Road, Clarksville, Pennsylvania, 15322. Uh, we offer uh, annual memberships, which currently is 30% discount and also day passes so if anybody wants to come uh, ch whether you want to check out pond fishing or stream fishing we have approximately two miles of stream fishing i think that's something you'd really enjoy would like to experience it's really just a fantastic time um, that being said tomorrow uh, thursday the 18th at three o'clock we're actually going to be stocking trout um, we're going to be stocking trout in 10 Mile Creek and also Daniel's Run. So if you've never experienced that, please come check it out. Um, all fish are five pounds and up. I repeat, five pounds and up. So going to be some really big, big, big fish. Um, we're having a fishing tournament on Friday. So until the fishing tournament ends, uh, the 10 Mile section will be closed specifically for the event. So effectively, uh, tomorrow at 3 o'clock until Friday uh, when the event ends, that area will be closed to uh, whether that's members or people even coming for day passes, just so everybody knows that as a courtesy. Really looking forward to it. It's going to be an exciting time. Um, so we have a fishing tournament on Friday. Uh, we, we collaborate and partner with the Appalachian Pipeliners Association. Fantastic organization, uh, advocates not only for energy, uh, these are people that are in the nitty gritty uh, that are, you know, not only installing, but maintaining, repairing uh, the gas lines, right of ways, etc. Throughout the, the, the Appalachian corridor, um, they are certainly extremely hardworking folks. Uh, everybody, if, if you have the opportunity, please check out the Appalachian Pipeliners Association. Amazing organization. You've been, you can become a social member. Uh, str strongly, strongly support them. Uh, personally, highly recommend that. Um, fantastic group. But this is going to be their event. It's a fundraiser for them. Uh, we're going to be doing different things from tagged fish to most tags caught, most fish caught. Um, <clears throat> our five stand range is going to be up and, and running. We just installed a new one. Uh, really excited about that. We've done a t tremendous amount of work at the forum. Uh, just, just beautifying it, making it look nice, uh, cause we're getting ready even for gardening plantings, uh, which I'm personally really excited about, but, uh, this, this event's going to be awesome. Please, if you have the opportunity, check out the Appalachian Pipeliners Association, fantastic organization and leadership, uh, big advocates for the, for the energy industry, which in turn, you know, they're just trying to not only create and sustain jobs, but provide natural gas for you and your families to, whether you're trying to uh, just operate your kitchen stove or your hot water heater or whatever whatever capacities you use natural gas. Additionally, looking ahead in the near future, um, you know, I just mentioned about garden plantings. Uh, that is something that I put a lot of sweat equity into. Um, we just finished a our this is was our fifth fifth flight plan flight pen excuse me. Um, we converted an old, uh, it was actually a tent frame, uh, a 20 by 40 tent frame. And, uh, I didn't want to throw it away. Uh, it really kind of outserved its purpose for what I was doing to perform. So we converted this thing into a, it's actually connected. I have four big pens. Uh, three pens are 25 by like 130. And then I have a 90 by 90. And then I just added this one. It's 20 by 40. But, um, I'm going to put a garden inside of it. So I'm really actually looking forward to that because I've been so tired over the years of fighting with having to put T-posts in the ground and putting up electric fence and just the total pain in the butt that that is and can be. Um, so I'm really looking forward to uh, this making my life and a lot of other people's lives uh, much easier. 
but we're going to be doing indoor, I guess we'll call it indoor or in pen garden spaces. We're doing a bunch of uh, sweet corn patches. Really excited about that. Uh, just recently finished planting a bunch of wildflowers and also sunflower fields. So that's really cool. So usually by the mid July, uh, a lot of that stuff will be ready for picking. So if you're ever interested in doing uh, photo sessions, if you're inter interested about coming and just picking flowers, or if you want to come and do freshly picked vegetables yourselves, uh, come check us out at Wild Acres Farm. Again, the address is 1997 Maury Road, Clarksville, Pennsylvania, 15322. We got a lot of really, really cool, cool stuff going on. Uh, for me personally, uh, I've been doing, on a change of topic, I've been doing a lot of turkey hunts. Uh, doing some guiding throughout, you know, the first three weeks of the season. Uh, today's actually was actually my last day. I'll be shutting down. Um, I've done what I wanted to do, or I guess uh, met my goals for the season, um, personally and professionally. I uh, had a lot of tremendous hunters in. I'd like to thank all of you that, that did come in. Um, the, the amount of work uh, is certainly uh, year long uh, to, to create those experiences. Uh, you know, whether it's the planting of the fields, uh, whether it's going and putting up pop, like different blinds. I mean, uh, holy smoke, some pop-up blinds used to be like 80 bucks. Uh, I just got a new pop-up blind, uh, two of them actually here recently. They were $200 a piece. So inflation has, uh, even from the, the hunting side of things, uh, to, see, to see the prices just soaring is kind of crazy. But uh, yeah, doing all that. Uh, like I said, the different food plots, uh, maintaining of the fields. Uh, it's certainly a passion and a love. And uh, I actually just had a uh, young, young little, young kid um, hunting, and uh, him and his grandfather and hunted for three years for turkeys and never saw a turkey. First morning they got, they went hunting it and uh, got one at 7 a.m. So really big bird. Uh, it was really an exciting experience seeing him, seeing him so happy. Um, I don't know who was happier, him or his grandfather, but. It was definitely, uh, I would say, a very humbling and rewarding experience for me because I know how hard that not only myself, um, I'd also like to acknowledge all the people uh, that help with the Marianne Outdoorsman Association, Wild Acres Farm. Uh, it's truly a passion, a love, people that, that really uh, just love the outdoors, farming, gardening, uh, being connected to nature. It's, it's definitely a team effort, and I, can't, I can never say thank you enough. Um, additionally, I'll have more information soon. Uh, I don't have any detailed specifics today, but we are going to be opening up our event venue at Wild Acres. Uh, we now have two spaces. Uh, there's an indoor barn space that holds approximately 80 to 100 people. Uh, it's got an indoor bar area, refrigerator, tables, chairs, etc. But we restored this uh, historical barn for smaller and mid-size events, and then we have a uh, gravel pad space uh, just above our lodge. Excuse me, uh, can hold approximately a 50 by 90 tent. Uh, so you're talking roughly 300 people in that kind of a space. Um, you would have to rent the tent, table, chairs, etc., for that specific space. But all in all, we could hold probably now in the ballpark of 400 people at the farm. So that's been something we've been working on uh, diligently, tirelessly, uh, you know, giving people the opportunity if they want to have uh, events, um, birthday parties, graduations, etc. cetera. Um, as of right now, uh, we're kind of putting together, I guess you could say, uh, pricing packages that people would want to, to would want to use the stuff. So I, I have more details soon about that, but that's been, we worked all winter. Uh, we finished, we finished a gravel pad last year, um, which was a task in its own, in its own regard. Um, but then, um, there, there were some folks that, that helped out with, with the barn. Um, too many names to name. You all know who you are. Uh, but if anybody's never replaced, uh, a barn floor, uh, with, with rough cut lumber, um, Definitely some back-breaking stuff, very dusty. Uh, it's a, it's a, trying to, trying to shim and level, you know, a 
a floor that was installed, um, you know, a hundred years ago. But not only not only did we have all these volunteers, but also we had some kids working because we like to do, um, you know, we like to teach the youth at the M Marion Outdoorsman Association (MOA). And I uh, had a couple kids that had the opportunity to be involved in that process of installing the floor. So I think that's something special. Uh, I'm certainly a big advocate. And, a, and also an enthusiast whenever it comes to talking about getting kids involved and engaged in the outdoors and, you know, the benefits they're in. Um, but, you know, when I went to school, I, we had wood shop. Uh, a lot of my school that I went to uh, growing up no longer has a wood shop. They got rid of it. And uh, I just think a lot of kids, you know, have lost the, we'll just call them basic living skills. Uh, to, to, to know a little bit of carpentry, to know how to fix some things even around, around the house, around the home. But at the farm, it's like, hey, you know, some, you got to get your hands dirty. You got to figure out a way to do it. Um, it might not always look the best. Um, a lot of times we do things and it might, might not, uh, meet anybody's, uh, best, best expectations of being a, a gem, but, uh, we do the best that we can. But the kids, the kids are, Really, that is a that's a tough conversation because I I've been dealing with some other programs here recently, and I I met some kids that were in trouble, and uh, kids came to the farm and were doing some work, and I must say it kind of kind of caught me off guard because um, these kids were in trouble, but these weren't bad kids, not bad kids in any capacity. Um, just missing out on, I think, that home life, that leadership uh, or role models in their lives that, like, really mentored them. And I think there's something to be said about that uh, when you talk about whether that's farming, whether you talk about the outdoors, um, and whether you just talk about somebody being there for somebody. Uh, and that doesn't always have to be just a kid. But, you know, we all need somebody to talk to. Uh, we all need to vent our problems at times or to have that, that open ear uh, so we can, you know, get that stress off our chest. And I thought it was certainly uh, something to see these young folks uh, that had made poor decisions uh, in their lives. And they probably didn't even know they were poor decisions at the time uh, because nobody ever told them or nobody ever taught them. And I think that uh, I'm really looking forward to the future um, with what I'm doing with, with the Marion Outdoorsman Association and, all, and, and at Wild Acres Farm because I think there's a tremendous amount of opportunities for kids uh, not only to learn skills but to learn, uh, we'll just call them mental escapes um, from their trials and tribulations, whether that's at home or maybe it's a veteran. I know we've been working a lot too, uh, trying to figure out a way. We have a, uh, a veteran's... Uh, program called the, the dog tag program where we not only uh, reach out to veterans but also we're trying to do a lot diligently with uh, first responders um, and I think that th those people uh, not only deserve our recognition and our thanks but if there's things that we can offer that are out of the box uh, thinking then we should so that's what right now we've been working very hard and tirelessly um, we're in the process of trying to figure out a way that we have a um, farmhouse that we just added to our facility, and we're, we're pursuing the idea of expanding what we are doing, uh, not only offering for kids and veterans, but we're seeing about like the potential for an on-site facility, uh, whether that's for therapy, rehabilitation, whether that's overnight stays, just uh, trying to give people that comfortable spot that they could sit down and Vent, vent their chest, uh, you know, talk about what's bothering them, get the get those thoughts and ideas out there to where, you know, they can talk about it. Because I think talking about it, whether you're a young person or, or even an adult, is extremely, extremely important. Um, but switching gears, i uh, got a lot of other stuff going on this summer. Um, Sunday, June the, excuse me one second, got to verify this. Yeah, Sunday, June 4th. Uh, the MOA is going to have their annual golf outing. That will be at Carmichael's Golf Club. It is $90 per person, four-person teams. There will be a lot of different 
prizes, gifts, etc. Um, would like to personally thank Three Three Rivers Volkswagen. They're actually putting a hole in one car, uh, so you'll have an opportunity to win a car uh, at this particular event. <clears throat> There'll be some other hole in one prizes along the way. Um, it changes every year, but they do like gift cards and there's uh, like brand new iron sets, etc. I'm not being specific about it because I don't know exactly, but every year it's usually in that ballpark. And like I said, there will be a vehicle uh, that you can win. Uh, long putting contests, um, longest drive, closest to the uh, pin second shot. So a lot of, a lot of fun stuff to do. Um, it's a tremendous fundraiser. This fundraiser specifically will be going to our Habitat Improvement Project. Um, so that is in June. In July, we're partnering with the Denbo Fire Department. Um, I'm really excited about this because I already said about, you know, trying to support and help our, our first responders. So we saw this as a great way. Um, we're doing a gun cash bash with them. That event is July the 22nd. Uh, that will be at the Denbo Fire Department located in Denbo, Pennsylvania. Um, please, if anybody would like to, to reach out, we have a stuff available uh, on our Facebook page, Marion Outdoorsman Association, and all the also the Dumbo Vesta 6 Fire Department. They have stuff uh, on their page as well. On July the 29th, uh, the, the VA out of Pittsburgh is actually going to be having their annual picnic at Wild Acres Farm. Um, all the veterans out there, I hope everybody will register for that event and come on down, um, get to be hands-on, see what we're doing, experience our facilities. Um, and, and hopefully we can put a smile on your face at the end of the day and uh, you get to sit there in a rocket chair, have a cup of coffee or a bottle of water and just kind of take in the scenery. I think it's something special. Um, when we roll into August, uh, August, we will start promoting our 2024 membership. Um, for those that do not know, every year we do this. Um, so if you're not currently an MOA member, when you go into August, we offer, we call it our early bird special. So basically you purchase your membership for 2024 in the month of August, you get September, October, November, and December free of charge. Now these are for folks that are currently not members, not active members. It's a one-time offer. So once you do it your first time, you know, that's, you know, and then the years after that you go on a calendar basis so again you get the rest of this year for free whenever this uh, offer pops up um, our early bird special um, so basically you would become a member effectively September 1st through the remainder of the year free of charge and then you get all of uh, 2024 so you know we're really excited about that uh, currently we have we are running a 30% discount on memberships um, throughout the duration of summer and, uh, you know, we just got a lot of really good stuff going on uh, before we roll back into September. Uh, everything's basically planted at the farm. Really excited about that. Now that we have the event venue rolling, uh, we're talking about doing some, some five-stand shoots, um, some different things with, uh, you know, just the clay range in general, trying to have some events, uh, networking opportunities. If anybody's ever interested about fundraisers, I know I said about the event space, but also uh, once we get into September and we start doing the uh, the upland bird hunting again, whether that's pheasant, quail, or chuckers, um, you can do, if you or your organization uh, that you're associated with, if you ever want to do a fundraiser, we offer fundraiser hunts. Uh, so we do fill hunts, we do continental hunts, we have space for food, etc. So if you're looking to do a unique fundraiser, uh, basically after golf season's winding down, um, come check us out because you can do fundraisers, uh, starting in September and those roll all the way through March. So it's a great opportunity if you're looking for different ways to raise some funds, uh, you know, get outside, uh, connect, connect you, your employees, uh, your organization to the outdoors. It's a tremendous opportunity. Um, in September, uh, not only will we be, we will be firing back up, you know, the hunting aspect of things. I've talked about it a little bit before. Uh, we're going to be doing another phase of habitat improvement on our stream called Daniel's Run. Uh, that's something I'm really 
personally passionate about. Um, Daniels runs a cold water tributary uh, in Washington County, and uh, we've spent a lot of time and effort uh, working on habitat improvement, uh, installing rock cross veins, uh, rock deflectors. Um, the the permits have been, uh, I would say, a long and uh, excruciating process. It's definitely um, enlightened me as to the plague of permitting in Pennsylvania. Um, not that it needs to be or that it has to be, but uh, it, it's something that, you know, it just got where it's at and that it's so complex. Uh, it's, it's like a dark hole, rabbit hole that you do not want to go down. I've been down it. Um, it. It consumes a lot of your time, effort, energy. And it's it's so complex at times. You're just like, why, why am I doing 30-page document for something that's so simple? Uh, but that's just the way it is as of today. And, uh, you know, one of my goals in life uh, – <laughs> is to help uh, ease the pain for, for folks. Uh, you know, whether you're a farmer or you're a hunting and fishing club or you're in the energy industry or whatever you're, you may be involved with. Um, to me, these things are, they're basic. They're supposed to be simple. And they're not simple. They are some of the most complex things that I've ever dealt with in my life. I've, I've done mining permits at the mine that were much more complex, much more detailed, uh, just to see, uh, you know, something on a larger scale in the mining industry take a few weeks. Uh, and here you're talking about putting a few rocks in a stream to improve the quality of the water, improve the habitat, improve the aquatic space. And it's taken months. Just at times, it kind of, you kind of like got to scratch your head and be like, what the heck are we doing here? Um, but in due time, I think that uh, more people are becoming aware. Uh, I know even through my involvement with the Pennsylvania Farm Bureau, the permitting stuff is definitely uh, something I'm hot and heavy on. Um, and not as an attack against anybody. I just think that, you know, we need more folks that deal with the permitting side of things uh, from all aspects of life. Like I said, from farming to the different uh, applications, whether that's a hunting, fishing club, energy industry, etc. Just need more people to be more vocal about it. Um, Going to events and just simply talking about it or whatnot isn't isn't what we need. You know, we got to get the ears of our legislators. We got to talk to them. We have to educate them on things that they might not be aware of because, you know, there's a lot of great legislators out there. We just have to, you know, talk to them, have a conversation, uh, engage them, bring them up to speed on like what we're doing, uh, why why certain things need modified, what what's the reasons, and you know, you might be surprised what's possible. But back to the habitat, <clears throat> the habitat is a huge project that, we, like I said, we've been working on. Uh, we started off with a handicap fishing pier, uh, something I'm very proud of, something that uh, is definitely near and dear to me personally because um, it's made a tremendous impact and benefit uh, to Daniel's run already. Um, last year, we installed six rock cross veins. Now, a rock cross vein is basically, imagine... I don't want to call it a waterfall because nobody like that's like a, a, a dirty word uh, in the permitting world. But uh, it kind of looks similar to a, a small waterfall uh, with the center of it being the lowest point. It's great for uh, adding a little bit of extra pool of water above. Uh, it churns the water as it crashes over and creates a pool below. And uh, adds a lot of oxygen to the water. So those different things with uh, in, in improved uh, aquatic space is, is extremely important. So we did six of them last year. Uh, we got to go back this year and uh, basically we, add, we have to add an, a whole nother row of rock. Now, when I say a rock, um, we're not talking, we're not talking like a rock you pick up and throw it. We're talking a rock that you need an excavator to grab it and move it. Something that's like three, 300 pounds plus. Um, so yeah, we have to, we have six waterfalls that we have to go back and touch up. We have a lot of uh, um, a lot of work there just to make that happen. Shuttling of rocks, delivery, uh, moving the rocks. Uh, it's it's a big little task. A big little task. The stream is little, but the task therein is so big. Um, and then we're adding three additional rock cross veins downstream that currently do not exist. 
So I'm really excited about that. Um, tremendous, uh, tremendous fishery space, uh, tremendous opportunity for us to um, make some great things happen. I'm really excited to expand the fishery, uh, develop some new spaces uh, currently unavailable. Um, we just got a lot of really cool stuff going on and, you know, if there's anybody out there that's ever interested in any, in any of this stuff, uh, if you're interested in learning about habitat or if you'd like to be involved in like, even the days we're doing like construction days, uh, just reach out to me. Uh, you can reach out to my personal Facebook page, uh, Jason White. Marion Outdoorsman Association's page. Uh, you can even message our Wild Acres Farm Fishery and Regulated Hunting Ground page. I, I'm always happy to involve people. Um, I'm really excited. I got a, uh, a young kid working with me this summer uh, through our kids' youth program. And uh, it's exciting because I could tell he's excited. And uh, I told him last night I saw him, and I, he rolled his hands over. And he, I was like, let me see your hands. And... Uh, he just has these like soft hands, really no, 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 nothing on them. And I rolled my hands over and you can see the calluses and like basically the grease that I couldn't get out of my, uh, you know, out of my fingerprints. And uh, I said, yeah, by the time we're done this summer, you'll have some of that. And he kind of chuckled and laughed, but you could tell, you could tell that, uh, you know, he, he's looking forward to it. So I'm really excited because, you know, we're doing things from, tree stand installations to I'm building some walls in, a, in our shop area. We're going to be doing some construction on our rifle range. I'm actually going to be doing some uh, framing in a couple walls. Um, geez, a piece. We just got a lot that we're going to be doing odds and ends things, some habitat improvement stuff, tree stand installation, painting and carpentry work on some stands that we actually do bird launches from a lot of uh, equip equipment maintenance um, so it's, it's going to be a busy summer. I'm really looking forward to it. And as I look ahead, um, into 2024, you know, when we roll into the bird season, it's going to be fantastic. The new habitat on Daniel's run, fantastic. But 2024, I look ahead. Um, I have more habitat work that I'm going to be doing on our pond at our farm doing a lot of dredging, different things, getting the sediment that's kind of built up over the years out. Uh, I know I mentioned earlier that we just actually did a, a, a did a stocking, but we're going to keep doing that as we kind of, you know, as we kind of get moving forward. And then Daniel's run, I'm hoping, I'm really, really hoping that it'll be our last phase of uh, habitat improvement on the stream. Not sure that we're going to get there, but I'm hopeful uh, I really am hopeful and we're just kind of going to see how it goes and see kind of where we get to, um, at the end of the year. But I must say, um, it's been three long years, uh, at Wild Acres Farm. We started from scratch. I cannot stress this enough to you, uh, going to a farm, I should say three farms that collectively make up Wild Acres, um, that was at one time stripped for coal, at one time strip mined, underground coal mined, underground stone mined, and even now still partially a stone mine. Um, it's had its trial, trials. Um, our, our tribulations have been many, trials have been greater. Uh, it's been tough. Um, it's been tiresome on our equipment. Uh, you're going through these fields and just constantly hitting rocks and different things so I was actually the other day we planted a, uh, a new field and it was an old reclaim site and I have a, a nice size UTV and I filled the entire back of the the dump bed it was heaping over with rocks um, and I'm talking rocks or softballs to I would say um, milk jug size uh rocks that came up out of the field from running the disc a um, lot of a lot of sweat uh, and, and obviously manual labor that went in with that but also you know you're just beating up on your equipment trying to get the ground uh, in a position that you can actually work it and use the machinery to, to do the normal farming tasks so it's been certainly uh, tiresome uh, it's been a, it's been a lot of work and you know 
we still have a long way to go. We're working right now on utilizing some uh, manure. I was I actually had a meeting about this yesterday. We're utilizing some manure to uh, reclaim some space that was once uh, a coal reclaim area and it was stone reclaim. But when they reclaimed it, it just didn't have the proper topsoil, I guess we'll call it. And lots of rocks, lots of... Uh, <laughs> bare spaces where there's just not good vegetation and uh we're just basically using this uh manure and, and uh fertilizer um to get some some uh appropriate material on top of the ground that vegetation can finally take off and get those nutrients in the ground because when you deal with any of these uh these rec reclamation sites and when i say reclamation for those that may not know like this is basically all the reject material that came out of whether it was a coal mine a stone mine whatever it may be so like for example a stone mine you know when they're doing stripping they'll peel back the, the uh the topsoil normally it's supposed to go into a pile you know by itself but rarely does that happen and then basically they mine down and then there ends up just being you know if they go down a hundred foot whatever they don't actually take as material to sell, it basically gets thrown into a reject pile, which then gets graded with a bulldozer. And then basically they just take uh, seed and seed over the top of it. Um, you know, it is what it is. You get a lot of rocks and different things that kind of poke, poke their way up like little groundhogs sticking out of the ground. And that's where I kind of come in is, you know, you just got to take the time to go through and work to, reclaim that ground get it in a, a beneficial manner and uh we're actually working on a one field right now it's approximately six six acres it's a lot of work but uh eventually i'm going to have it in a condition where we can utilize it as a bird hunting field um right now it's kind of sitting there not doing a whole lot for us but i see it as a i see it as an opportunity um it's just going to take some time a little bit of uh elbow grease Lots of rocks are going to need to be picked up. Um, but it's amazing how a little bit of manure, uh, horse manure is what we're using, but a little bit of horse manure can help to reclaim six acres of ground and, and get some good vegetation. What's good vegetation do? Well, I mean, right out of the gate, uh, I can tell you it helps with erosion control because whenever you get strong rains, if you got good uh, good vegetation, Number one, you got a good root base, and either the plants are soaking up the water, they're filtering the water, they're slowing the water down. So when you're talking about flooding, uh, areas like this, which I can tell you in Washington County, Pennsylvania alone, there's 10,000 acres of, uh, you know, I, I would call it comparable spaces. Um, the more vegetation you can get, the better. Um, filters the water, slows water down. And from a wildlife perspective, you know, is a deer or a turkey going to walk around and peck on, you know, uh, a coal pile? For the most part, no. Uh, turkeys do go and pick up small rocks, as do a lot of other birds, uh, to get for uh, hel helping them actually digest food. But that being said, vegetation draws in animals and wildlife. So when, when at the end of the day, uh, if we could take these spaces, like I said, and uh, get good vegetation it's only going to help with wildlife as well so obviously with what i'm doing wild acres wildlife it goes hand in hand it all makes sense so just really looking forward to getting that project done i'm hoping that we should be in a good spot to uh to do some good plantings i think i'm hoping by fall uh i'm not really i don't want to say i'm committed one way or the other because as of right now i don't know the answer as to where we'll end up um i feel good about it um but it's a lot of work uh like i said when you get into these when you get into these properties you don't know what you're gonna hit a little rock sticking up might actually be an iceberg and what's what's under the ground might be much bigger than what you can actually see so you know i'm really looking forward to, to doing that and uh certainly if anybody out there in the same capacity if you have a property uh you know, that you can think of that's similar, you know, reach out. I'm happy to talk to you about it. I'm happy to give some advice. Um, you know, there's a lot of properties that you might think are kind of worthless, but 
with a with a good uh, plan of attack as to what your goals are, whether that's a farming aspect, whether it's wildlife management, um, you know, there's opportunities to develop these properties. So don't think of it as, as a waste. Uh, if anything, just look at it as an opportunity that you got to just, you know, hit the right points and you can really develop it and move forward. Um, I want to go back and just kind of recap over some of the MOA's upcoming events. Um, again, tomorrow, uh, this Thursday, the 18th, we're going to be stocking trout. 3 p.m., we'll be stocking at Pump Station and also Daniel's Run, uh, located at Wild Acres Farm, Fishery, and Regulated Hunting Grounds. That's 1997 Maury Road, Clarksville, Pennsylvania, 15322. All trout are going to be five pounds and up, five pounds and up. Those are big trout. So if you're looking to really bend your rod, come check us out. <clears throat> this Friday, the Appalachian Pipeliners Association are hosting their inaugural fly fishing tournament. Really excited about this. We're going to be using our new event spaces, uh, our new and up, our new and improved uh, five stand uh, lounge spaces. So it's really awesome. Really looking forward to uh, what we're doing all the things we have to offer. So please, like I said, come check us out. I really think you'll enjoy yourselves. Um, support the Appalachian Pipeliners and their whole initiatives, whether that's in the ener energy industry and also giving back to, to youth, um, youth educational programs. They're, they are a fantastic organization. Uh, looking ahead, Sunday, June the 4th. Um, I apologize. I think I said that right, wrong. That is, yeah, Sunday, June the 4th the annual MOA golf outing. So get the dust off those clubs. Come on out to Carmichael's Golf Club, 9 a.m., $90 a person. Like I said, lots of gifts, prizes, potentially a vehicle, hole-in-one. I don't know. I know I, I probably can't do it, but, you know, it's fun to, fun to dream, right? Uh, long putt challenges, long drive challenges, closest to the pin second shot. If you're just looking to support uh, habitat and conservation, that's where the money's going. Uh, we're going to be working on the uh, Daniels Run Habitat Improvement Project coming up in the fall. If you can't make that, in July we have two fantastic events. One is a collaboration with uh, the Dembo Vesta 6 Fire Department. We're going to be having a gun and cash bash. That is July the 22nd at Dembo Vesta 6 Fire Department. Please come out. If you don't support habitat and conservation i certainly hope you would support our first responders so please consider doing that july the 29th the moa dog tag program is going to be hosting uh the pittsburgh va they're going to be having their annual picnic uh really excited about this uh just you know collaborating collaborating and partnering with the with the uh veterans is very near and dear and important to us uh james shetler uh the the overseer um of the dog tag program the manager of the dog tag program uh he's as, as passionate as they come um and i really if anybody could come out and support not only our organization but him uh, as a person for his passions and commitment to veterans and first responders i know that i would appreciate that so kudos to him uh he deserves it um i know my my probably appreciation doesn't mean all the all that in the world but Certainly, uh, he means a lot to me, and I know that what the veterans and first responder do mean the world to him. So, uh, thank you, Whip. Uh, also, just looking ahead to the future, uh, like I said, uh, August, we will open up our 2024 memberships. That's our early bird special, so stay tuned for that if you're interested. Uh, additionally, upland bird hunting fires back up in September, and also uh, we're going to be doing this massive phase of Daniel's run. Uh, got a lot to go. I'm really excited about it. I see it as a uh, viable, uh, what do I want to call it, just a viable opportunity to continue developing and building and uh, just really looking forward to the future with how this all kind of transpires and goes. So we got a lot of cool stuff going and uh, you know if there's anything that that we can do to partner with you to give you some guidance if I can help you in any way, whether that's in any capacity with uh, first responders or, or helping with fundraisers, giving you any guidance at all, uh, you know, we are always here, uh, you know, to help. But 
If you'd like to join the Mariana Outdoorsman Association, go to MarianaOutdoors.com. Again, it's MarianaOutdoors.com. That's uh, MarianaOutdoors.com. You can also go to our Facebook page, Mariana Outdoorsman Association. And we also have the Wild Acres Farm, Fishery, and Regulated Hunting Grounds Facebook page. We're also on Instagram with both of those pages. And also you can follow us at Mariana Outdoors YouTube channel. Got a lot of, actually, a lot of educational videos on there about different things. Uh, more in del detailed, I guess, recordings of projects and things we're doing around the farm, things we got going on. So, you know, really excited, looking forward to the future. But look forward to seeing everybody or talking to everybody next week. But for the great outdoors, I'm signing off. This is Jason White. We will see you soon. All right, Jason, great stuff. We'll see you again next week. Right now we have 58 degrees. Outside of our WPU Medicine Union Town Hospital Studio, taking a look at the rest of that WMBS weather watch for all of southwest Pennsylvania. Down to 48 this evening, going up to 68 this afternoon, 77 for Thursday, 78 Friday, down to 57 overnight Friday, 70 with a chance of rain on Saturday, and 74 on Sunday, 74 Monday and Tuesday, up to 78. This is your local station, 590 AM and 101.1 FM. W266DB, WMBS Uniontown. CBS News at 11 is on the way in just a bit. And right now, again, we have sunny and 58 on this Wednesday. Good morning. This is CBS News on the Hour, presented by Indeed.com. I'm